Good morning, Year 3, and happy Thursday. Well, we are up to our fourth Let English lesson this week, and it's time today to get really stuck into writing, so I can't wait to see what you come up with. Today in the lesson, we will you will need a pen or a pencil and your home learning book or a piece of paper to write on. Press pause while you gather these things and then press play when you're ready to get started. Well done. So your writing task this week is to write a short sequel to Into the Forest. A sequel is the story that comes after the book. If you need to think about it or remind yourself about what happens in the book, so then you can write a story after it, you can go to the link that's on the screen there and, um, and just remind yourself about the story. Listen to the story again. So each day this week, you've been learning a different skill so that you can include all of those skills in your big piece of writing, which we're going to start today. So my turn today, I am learning to use a wide range of subordinating conjunctions, direct speech and relative clauses in my writing to write a sequel to the story. Your turn. Fantastic. Wow, that's a lot of things you've learned about today. We're going to go back over all of them because I know they're all very new and it's a, it can be quite difficult. So, but first, we are going to plan out our story. Last week, we did this as well. We retold the beginning of the story, then the problem that happened in the middle, and then we told it the ending of the story. Today, you're going to plan the story that you have created yourself. So I'm going to give you a few minutes now to write the headings, introduction, climax and ending in your book at the top of three columns. Press pause while you do that and press play when you're ready to get started. Fantastic. So now you should have the heading, introduction, climax and ending at the um, on your page. So firstly, you're going to write one or two sentences about what happens at the beginning of the story. So remember, the boy has just found his father at his grandmother's place. He comes home with his dad and what happens? Does he talk about um, is it is the main is this same boy the main character? You have to introduce your main character. Talk about him. What does the main character like or not like? Where is your story set? What does he do? Does he come home and tell his mum about all the characters that he's seen in the story in in the forest? On your page now in the introduction column I just want you to write one or two sentences about what happens at the beginning of your story. Press pause while you do that and then press play when you're ready to keep going. Well done I think some of your stories are going to be fantastic. Okay now in the middle of this your the middle column underneath climax this is where we're going to think about what our problem is in our story. You're going to introduce the problem. Is someone in trouble? Are there new characters that come into the story? This is where you're going to start. So now you're going to have two minutes to talk about what happens next. After the boy, he might decide to go back into the forest to see grandmother or to see meet some of the characters. Or maybe you have a different problem. Press pause while you work out two sentences to talk about what happens in the middle of your story. Press pause while you do that and press play when you're ready to check. Fantastic. Now, lastly, you're going to talk about how your problem is solved. Underneath ending, you're going to now talk about how the boy gets out of trouble, the trouble that he's in. Press pause while you write two sentences about that and press play when you're ready to continue. Fantastic. So let's just check again. 
This is the narrative structure, introduction, climax, ending. Have you, in the introduction, introduced the characters or, or setting? I've said the boy tells his mum about the hungry, scared children he met in the forest and explains that he wants to take care of her, uh, to take care of these children. If you need to press pause and maybe fix up your um, story, that's fine. But remember, it doesn't have to be exactly the same as me. Just make sure you're introducing your characters. In the middle of your story then, I've said the boy decides to take a cake into the forest once again for the children. But maybe he gets lost. Maybe a problem is that he cannot find the children. Or maybe you've chosen a problem that he comes across some dangerous creatures. Have you talked about your problem that the boy has in the middle underneath climax? Press pause if you need to fix up your answer or fix up your planning for the middle. And then, uh, how is the problem solved? Have you said in the last column how the boy gets out of trouble? Does he end up finding the children that they and they become friends? Does the children help him find his home again? Or does grandmother find him and take him home? That's some problem-solving ideas. You might have a different one. If you've chosen a different main character, you might have a completely different story. And that's okay. Just make sure you've got your introduction, the middle where you the climax where you talk about the problem and then the ending where you solved your problem. If you need to pause there and fix up your story structure, you can do that now and then press play when you're ready to continue. Fantastic. So now that we have worked out what's going to happen in our story, we need to remember what are those skills and language features we're going to include in our story. The first one is subordinating conjunctions. My turn. Subordinating conjunctions join a main clause and a dependent clause together. Your turn. Fantastic. Let's remind ourselves about subordinating conjunctions. He walked carefully towards her after she smiled at him. There's the main clause, he walked carefully towards her. He Then the subordinating conjunction, the joining word, and then dependent clause, He she smiled at him. The subordinating conjunction joins the main clause and the dependent clause. Here are some subordinating conjunctions that you might like to write to include in your story. You can, at the end of this um, video, you can come back to this screen to help you use a variety of subordinating conjunctions in your writing. Which of these sentences includes a subordinating conjunction? How do you know? Number one, the frightened boy shivered every time he saw a shadow. The boy squeezed his palms together until they turned red. He ran into the darkening forest. Which one of these sentences includes a subordinating conjunction? On the piece of paper in front of you, write down one, two, and three, and tick if they have the sentences have a subordinating conjunction. Cross if they don't. Press pause while you answer this question and press play when you're ready to continue. Okay, let's see how you went. The frightened boy shivered every time he saw a shadow. Every time is the subordinating conjunction. Number one should have a tick. The frightened boy shivered is the main clause. He saw a shadow. That's the dependent clause. Every time joins those two together. The boy squeezed his palms together. That's your main clause. Until, that's your subordinating conjunction, the joining word. They turned red. That's the dependent clause. The dependent clause is doesn't really, um, it's not a complete thought. So it's not a main clause. 
He ran into the darkening forest. That doesn't have a, con a subordinating conjunction. That sentence is just a main clause. So number one and two have a subordinating conjunction. Well done. Press pause if you need to fix up your answer before you continue. Okay, so we've reminded ourselves about subordinating conjunctions. The second thing we did was we learned about was direct speech. My turn. Direct speech is spoken words. Inadverted commas with a reporting clause. Your turn. Fantastic, beautiful singing voices again. So all the words spoken in direct speech must be in between the inverted commas. The first word of direct speech has a capital. All the words in red are in between the inverted commas. That means they are spoken. There's a capital letter at the beginning of it. What's the direct speech in this sentence? Press pause while you work out your answer. Fantastic. Oh, you, some of you got that correct. The direct speech in this sentence is no, it's for my poorly grandma. This is the spoken words because they're in between the inverted commas. Fantastic if you got that correct. And can you see how the first word in the spoken words is a capital letter? Okay, which sentence includes spoken words here? Where did you find the such a delicious cake? Asked the boy. Number two, I wonder if he found anyone in the forest. Which one of these sentences includes spoken words? Let's see how you went. Did you have number one as the correct answer? Where did you find such a delicious cake? You can see number one has inverted commas and all the words inside the inverted commas are direct speech or spoken words. Number two, I wonder if he found anyone in the forest. There are no inverted commas there. So we don't know that that is spoken words. My turn. Reporting clauses tell us who is speaking. Reporting clauses are outside the inverted commas. Your turn. Fantastic. Said the girl is the reporting clause. It's telling us who's spoken and it's outside the inverted commas. They're cutting wood in the forest, said the girl. The girl is speaking. Grandma whispered quietly, come in, dear. Grandma whispered quietly is the reporting clause because it's outside these inverted commas. And it tells us who is speaking. Grandma is speaking. Which sentence uses reporting clauses correctly? Write down on the piece of paper in front of you, one, two, and three. Press um, tick or cross, um, depending on whether there is a reporting clause in the sentence written correctly. Press pause while you work out your answer and press play when you're ready to continue. Okay, let's see how you went. The first one isn't correct because have a look, the reporting clause is inside the inverted commas. The reporting clause needs to be outside the inverted commas. Number two is correct because the spoken words are inside the inverted commas and there's a reporting clause telling us who is speaking. Number three, I've bought cake from mum. We don't know who's saying that. There's inverted commas, but there's no reporting clause. So that is not correct. Okay. 
The last skill that we learnt this week is relative clauses. My turn. A relative clause comes after a noun and gives more information about the noun. It starts with that, which, who, whose, where or when. Your turn. Well done, Year 3. Okay, let's see what a relative clause is. I picked up the basket which was full of fresh cake. The relative clause comes after the noun. Basket is the noun. So this which was full of fresh cake is the relative clause. It starts with one of these words, that, which, who, whose, where or when. Which one of those words is this relative clause starting with? Yes, which. So this is the relative clause telling more information about the basket. That is the girl who hid behind the oak tree. That the girl is the noun that we are focusing on. And the relative clause comes after the noun and it tells us about the girl. Which girl? The girl who hid behind the oak tree. And have a look, this starts with one of our words that relative clauses start with. It starts with who. And have a look at this one. The path that leads into the dark woods is dangerous. The path, path is the noun, and then the relative clause tells us more information about the path. Which path? Oh, the path that leads into the dark woods. The part in yellow is the relative clause. And this relative clause starts with that, which is one of the words that relative clauses can start with. Which of these sentences includes a relative clause? And how do you know? Write down one, two, and three, and then tick if it has an relative clause, cross if it doesn't. Press pause while you work it out and press play when you're ready to check your answer. How did you go? Did you spot the relative clause? The boy is the noun who was trying to get home. That's the relative clause talking about the boy. Number two, that's just a main clause. The boy squeezed his palms together tightly. There's no relative clause there giving us more information about the boy. So that's a cross. And number three, he ran behind the tree that swayed in the wind. What's the noun that we're looking at there? We're talking about the tree. The tree is the noun. That swayed in the wind is telling us more information about the tree. So number three is a tick. Press pause if you need to fix up your answer and press play when you're ready to continue. Okay, so now it's your turn. You're going to start writing your sequel to Into the Forest. You've already got a few ideas in your columns, your introduction, climax and ending to help you work out what's going to happen in your story. Don't forget to follow that plan so that you know you're writing in a story narrative structure. Remember also to include subordinating conjunctions, direct speech, and relative clauses. Well done for focusing so hard today. If you need to go back and review and look over what any of those things we've learnt today are, you can go back in the video and listen to it again. I can't wait to hear what happens in all of your stories. Have a good day. Bye.